This is a lecture prepared by Farouk Alemi. Recall the framework for hypothesis testing. First, we examine the assumptions, then state the hypothesis, calculate the statistic, look up the p-value, and then decide to reject or fail the null hypothesis. In this set of slides, we apply this framework to comparing the rate calculated from a sample to the rate in a hypothesized value. First assumption is that the sample observations are independent. If data came from a simple random sample and consisted of less than 10% of the population, then the independence of the assumption is reasonable. Alternatively, if the data came from a random process, we must evaluate the independence condition more carefully. For example, arrival of patients to a hospital may be argued to be random. Patients' diseases are independent unless the patient has an infectious disease or there is mass casualty, in which case observing the occurrence of one disease will raise suspicion about others, diagnosis of others. The second assumption is that the distribution of the rate is near normal. A rate can be considered the average of the observations. If observations are scored as 1 when it succeeds and 0 otherwise, this average is assumed to have a normal distribution. The assumption of normal distribution is reasonable when there are at least 10 successes and 10 failures in our sample. This is called the success-failure condition. The first formula says that the sample size n times the probability of success, shown as p, is greater than 10. Here p is the population rate of success. This population rate can be estimated as the sample rate or as the hypothesized null value. The second formula says that the sample size n times the probability of failure, shown as 1 minus p, is greater than 10. Here again, p is estimated from either the sample rate or from the hypothesized population rate. In our framework for hypothesis testing, the next step is to state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the probability of success or the rate of observing the event is a specific value. The alternative hypothesis, if we are doing a two-sided test, is that the rate is not the hypothesized null value. The, under the alternative hypothesis, if we are doing a one-sided test, is that the rate is either more or less than the null value. <coughs> the third step in our framework for hypothesis testing is to calculate the test statistic. The statistic z is calculated from the point estimate minus the null value divided by the standard error. For sample mean, we use the rate of success within the sample. Standard error of the sample rate is calculated as square root of rate of success times rate of failure divided by the sample size. Then, the statistic z is calculated using this formula. <coughs> Next step in our inference framework is to look up the p-value associated with the calculated z statistic, as before this is done using z-tables. The z-table gives the area associated with observing a value less than z. In one-sided test, the p-value is the white area. In two-sided tests, the p-value is double the white area. Next step in our framework 
is to infer from the sample if the population has the hypothesized null value. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05 or a preset level of type 1 error, the null hypothesis is rejected. Let us look at an example. In a random sample, 52% of eligible patients use our hospital service. Does this provide convincing evidence, at least at level of 95%, for the claim that more than 50% of the eligible patients use our hospital? First, we check the assumptions. Our first assumption was that the observations in the sample are independent. Since we took a random sample, then this is likely, especially if we sand sampled less than 10% of the population. The second assumption is that the rate of use of our hospital services can be considered an average, and this sample average has a near normal distribution. <coughs> In a one proportion hypothesis test, the success failure condition is checked using the null proportion. The pr hypothesized null value for the proportion is 50% or 0 0.5. The number of patients who use our service is expected to be 500 times 0 0.05, I'm sorry, 0 0.5, which gives us 250, which is higher than the 10 required. The same holds for the number of failures. Therefore, the success failure condition is verified. We can approximate the distribution of the rate as near normal distribution. Next, we state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the rate of use of our service is 50%. The alternative hypothesis is that the rate is higher. The sample we mean was 0 0.52, the hypothesized value was 0 0.5, and the sample size was 500. The z is calculated as 0 0.89. Notice that the, the lower part of this division is the standard error. We now look up the p-value associated with the z of 0 0.89. The z-score is 0.8133, which gives us the p-value for the right tail as 0 0.1867. This is the area marked in blue. Because the p-value of 0 0.19 is larger than 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. In this lecture, we have used our inference framework to see how to test if the population rate is different from a hypothesized value.